We're coming off that Democratic debate in South Carolina last night. It was a raucous one. Bernie Sanders on the firing line, and for the first time, they debated that issue on so many of our minds, coronavirus. It came right after a new warning from the CDC saying its spread here is inevitable, and Americans should prepare for, quote, significant disruptions in their lives. Overseas, George, a U.S. soldier in South Korea has now become the first American service member infected and fears hitting Wall Street hard again. With the Dow dropping nearly 880 points, there are now more than 81,000 cases worldwide. Let's go to Steve Osnesami outside CDC headquarters in Atlanta with more this morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Michael. One of the things that has authorities here at the CDC concern are the outbreaks that are taking place across the world, outbreaks outside of Asia that they cannot directly tie back to Asia. The CDC this morning is putting it plainly that it's not a question of if the virus will spread in the United States, but a matter of when. We are asking the American public to work with us to prepare in the expectation that this could be bad. The people are getting better. And while the president is trying to calm the panic, insisting that the U.S. is well prepared for any outbreak, lawmakers on Capitol Hill weren't so convinced. Sorry, I don't head of Homeland question. Security, do we have enough respirators or not? The government says it could need around 300 million masks and respirators to fight an outbreak, but only has about 30 million on hand. At a 3M plant in South Dakota where the masks are made, they're working around the clock and it's still not enough. The frustration in Washington is overflowing. This is not the time to try to shortchange the American people. A vaccine is still at least several months away and for now, if there's an outbreak, health officials are recommending Americans work harder to clean surfaces and to distance themselves from crowds. Meanwhile, overseas, the number of cases is rising. In South Korea, the U.S. military is announcing it's on high alert as the first U.S. service member has tested positive for the virus. That 23-year-old soldier is now in self-quarantine at his off-base residence. And in Italy, there have been more than 320 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. American schools like Syracuse and Fairfield University are closing their study abroad programs in the country. Grace Palmieri and Lauren Tassi are studying in Florence with the University of Illinois and Illinois State. They have been told not to travel to Milan. Most of the information that we're getting is from our advisors here, we're just kind of trying to take whatever precautions they tell us to. We were both supposed to travel this weekend to Milan and had to cancel our trips because we were told that it's probably best that we stay home. At a hotel in Spain's Canary Islands, the doors are chained shut and nearly a thousand tourists there have been ordered to stay in their rooms because an Italian guest is sick with the virus. The president this morning is responding to criticisms of his administration's handling of the coronavirus, including questions about funding cuts to the CDC. The president this evening is holding a news conference with CDC officials in Washington. Robin. Got to keep that in mind, Steve. Thank you. The CDC's principal deputy director, Dr. Ann Shuket, is good enough to join us now live from Atlanta. We appreciate your time this morning. We know how busy you are. And we've also heard about the strong warning from your agency. So can you please break down how dire the situation is right now? This is a relatively new virus, and we're learning every day more and more about it. One of the things we've learned is that it's quite transmissible. Beyond the outbreak in China, the outbreak on the cruise ship, we now have outbreaks in, in Europe, outbreaks in other countries in Asia, and we recognize that our very strong measures here in the United States to contain the virus, to keep it limited to very low numbers, may not hold for the long haul. We don't know exactly what will occur here, but the transmissibility has us wanting to be prepared. We also know that the virus is not as severe as we first feared in the reports out of Hubei province. What we're seeing in terms of severe cases is primarily the elderly and people with chronic conditions like diabetes or heart disease that are hardly hit. What um, we aren't seeing a lot of disease in children, which mm. is a, a feature of flu. So we're still learning and we wanna be prepared and the outbreaks in Europe and in South Korea and the Middle East have made us want to um, raise our um, attention. And how are you being prepared? Because President Trump is saying that everything is under control. Do you, do you share that right now? And, and what are the, the steps going forward? 
We work very closely with state and local public health partners. We actually practice for pandemics and threats like this. And so we've been intensifying our communication and outreach to the health departments because when outbreaks hit, it's really on that front line, city, county, or state, that public health is on call. So we're equipping them with guidance about how to address this threat should it arrive in their communities and um, working on their strategies. We're also um, reaching out to the healthcare sector and to businesses and educational settings. It's really a question of making sure that those plans we had for, for a potential pandemic are um, updated and ready to implement should we need them. And what is your advice for people who are watching this morning, precautions that they can take? Well, this is a respiratory virus, and we think it's spread through respiratory droplets, you know, coughs and sneezes and so forth. So those sensible measures we talk about every year with the flu are uh, important steps that you can take. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. Stay home when you're sick and wash your hands. It's a great reminder that washing your hands is a good prevention step for respiratory viruses. Can never say that enough. Dr. Ann Shuka, thank you very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.